I got to the station on day two of my La Plata trip, but didn't have time to set up properly. Eastbound Union Pacific train FZCIG4 was already there. It's not uncommon to see UP trains using trackage rights through here. Like many stack trains on the Marceline subdivision, this one was a fast-moving, high-priority, long and heavy train. Five locomotives on the head end and two more in the middle for good measure to get this train to Chicago. Afterwards, I got the rest of my gear out of the car and set up on the other side. La Plata's Art Deco station was built in 1945 by the Santa Fe and was restored in 2001 by local preservationists. Though the freight trains would keep on coming today, Amtrak would not. At this time, Amtrak was still running all cross-country trains tri-weekly, so I would not see the Southwest Chief until the next day. No matter, BNSF kept me busy enough to forget about the passenger trains. Set up next at the platform in front of the virtual rail fan camera in time for this eastbound grain train. The amount of cascade green on this one was a nice sight. Several Santa Fe and Burlington Northern cars still roam the rails today in their original schemes.
Up next came this intermodal with a nice surprise from back home on the point. Three Norfolk Southern locomotives, ES40DC7570, C44-9W9312, and AC44C6M 4252. I said this in my Oklahoma rail fanning video from 2017, but it seems no matter where I go I always catch NS power and this trip was no exception. What I didn't know was that by the end of this trip I would see motive power from every single class 1 railroad on the North American continent, including power from Canada and Mexico. position on a bench at the station as another westbound flew by. I then decided to leave for a while to grab some lunch. When I came back, I set up on the west end of the station as another intermodal was approaching. This part of the station area was just a dirt lot until Amtrak expanded the platform a few years ago. speeds of the trains on the Transcon are necessary to keep the high demand freights moving across the country. Logic tells you it's probably not a good idea to stand too close to one of these trains. The zoom lens is your friend. Well, even though I was standing a good ways back from this train... I am amazed this thing only got just a few scratches here 
And then that wiring got a little scuffed up right there on the microphone. I mean, that could have been a whole lot worse. <laughs> but uh, let that be a warning to y'all. Don't stand too close to that intermodal windstorm unless you've got something to hold on to your camera with. Luckily, the camera survived this one, but could have been a whole lot worse. <laughs> After I picked up my pride and my camera off the ground, I readied myself for another intermodal. Kansas City Southern ES44AC 4687 trailing. Solid UPS trailers and containers on this one. No double stacks. I was about to turn back to my car to enjoy my food, but was surprised by this manifest and had to set up quickly again. After a bit of a lull, the next train to come through was the UEOCSOXO-03T. Good lord, what a name. Loaded frac sand off the Canadian National at Eola, Illinois to Southton, Texas. to go back to the hotel for a while to rest. When I got back, I was greeted by Union Pacific Power once again. UPS trailers on this one, BNSF train ZWSPS BD9-16L, Willow Springs, Illinois to San Bernardino, California. Ah, now there's a place I wish I was right now.
right behind the Z train came this westbound. Here was what I was hoping to catch more than anything else out here. BNSF 716, still in the classic red and silver war bonnet paint scheme. I hoped to see at least one war bonnet while I was on this trip, and this wouldn't be my last one either. I was starting to think about dinner at this point when here came another surprise. Train UGALKCM6-16Z. Geometry train originating from Murray Yard in Galesburg, Illinois to Argentine Yard in Kansas City. One more westbound before dinner, BNSF HNTW KCK1 15A from Minneapolis, BNSF SD75M 254 trailing. off at this point and drove to Kirksville to Colton's Steakhouse and Grill. I got back into town after dark, just in time for one last surprise in the form of this westbound manifest. Nine locomotives including a Heritage 1-9, a Canadian National ET-44AC, a Kansas City Southern SD-70ACE, and another Warbonnet-9. Stay tuned for part three, the last video of my La Plata trip. This is Ravenhawk6910, signing off.